Solana tokens continue to steep slide while major cryptos stay flat. Solana fell 10% in the past 24 hours, adding to a 20% slide over the past week, and it fell below $10 for the first time in nearly two years yesterday. Nine straight days of losses for Sol, longest run of decline since mid-September of 2021. Some of the most affected Sol tokens is Serum, RIP my Serum bag, um, which was kind of part of FTX Alameda, affiliated with all those folks. Radom is down 3.4%. That is a loss of peanuts. Solland is down 4.4%. And... Yeah, so let's kind of talk about it. Oh, also too, another important thing is value locked on Solana-based applications has declined 98% since November of 2021. And Sol is down 96.3% from all-time high of approximately $260. I think a lot of this also has to do with D-Gods and with youths essentially bridging over to um, Ethereum and Matic Polygon. One thing I will say though, I do have a moon bag of Solana and I'm going to continue to keep that moon bag. And I will be interested in potentially buying Solana around like under the $3 area. Why am I doing that? Well, it would be an, a super, super risky play, but sometimes, sometimes these plays do play out depending on what happens. Um, and again, almost all cryptocurrencies are down like 70 to 90% from all time high. If your crypto project is pumping and you have like, if you're in like a two digit pump, like you know, the 80%, 90% pump, there's probably something fishy going on. Anyways, um, what I'm doing, it's not financial advice as to why I want to buy at those low levels. It would be a super risky play for me. And if it plays out, yay for me. If it doesn't work out, then I'm fully um, taking responsibility for my actions and losing that money. Will, since you look like you're from California <laughs> today, talk to <laughs> us. Uh, yeah, like I was saying before the show, it's about eight inches of snow outside. So not exactly Southern California today. But let's look at the numbers for Solana, which is definitely having a struggle moment right now. 24 hours down 10%, seven days down 20%, last month down 30%, last three months down 71% and down from 95% over the last year. Really tough place to be building if you're a Solana developer, right? Like This has happened to a lot of coins. This has happened to Bitcoin. This has happened to Ethereum. And now maybe it's happening to Solana, right? And Bitcoin and Ethereum have sort of found their footing. Both those coins are down about 70% year to date, but they're pretty much in everyone's portfolio at this point. And people are not just going to sell them, right? So I think a lot of people in the Solana community are trying to bridge the gap between bear cycles, right? They're trying to say, we're still going to be here. Yes, the price of our token is down. We've even broken below that $10 support level, but we still have a developer community. We still have projects that we are working on. I think the biggest thing right now is for Solana community to get over what happened with FTX and SBF because FTX has such a pivotal place within the Solana community, right? There was a lot of funding going both ways. Serum was invested heavily on by SBF. And now that project is more or less defunct. I think a lot of Solana developers are looking at that and kind of have a hangover from the bull market. And then they got kicked in the, like, really just kicked in the nuts, to be fair, like after SBF and all that. So <laughs> they're going to have to figure out what Ouch. to do. With that. Owie, Jen, that hurts me. <laughs> uh, you know, as I read the story, I think about a year ago when so many newcomers to the space got into the space because of Solana. So I, I think about, you know, when Solana, I think they were the official blockchain of Lollapalooza. People who were just getting into NFTs found it a little bit easier to work with some of the Solana marketplaces. They solved some of the issues that um, we saw with Ethereum when it came to NFTs. And now this. And I think about those people and I think about what they might be experiencing. And Wendy, I think you gave great advice at the beginning of the show. I'm not saying that people should go and invest in Solana, but you know, they need to figure out how to get out of this and they're not the only chain going through what's happening right now. So if you are new to the space, hang in there. Um, I have a question for you, Wendy. You mentioned D-Gods and Utes um, transitioning over to Polygon and Ethereum. Do you think that we're going to see more Solana projects, more Solana developers taking advantage of some of these um, grants to switch chains during this? Or do you think that we're going to see that Solana commu developer community stay strong and weather out the bear? So the NFT community is very different from the cryptocurrency community and they run kind of, they run a little bit more like businesses, I want to say that might not be true in all cases, but we're in the midst of a bear market. And if a legitimate project is offering you money to help you continue to build and develop and keep the project afloat so that the community stays whole, so that your team stays whole, why wouldn't you accept that? Like the future of Solana is very, very uncertain. I'm not saying 
I'm not calling it a bad project. I'm not saying that the founders did anything wrong. I don't know enough. And a lot more is going to come out when it, we're talking about FTX and Alameda and all the crazy shady things that they were doing. So nobody, sh you know, there's that part. But at the same time, like if you're trying to keep your team afloat and you're trying to keep the project afloat, you have like crypto communities are almost like shareholders in a way. Um, so I think it's important to take advantage of those opportunities. Like founders are going to be held accountable if they don't do the best that they can to keep the project afloat. Like how terrible would it be if um, a big cryptocurrency project or big NFT project on Solana ended up failing um, because they did, the founders didn't, or the founders and the team didn't merge over to Ethereum or Polygon because we have a better feeling that Ethereum Polygon may sustain as opposed to Solana at this time. And again, I'm not saying anything bad about Solana or the communities built on it. I'm just talking about, you know, people's livelihoods at this point. Um, it's, a, it's supposed to be run like a business. And if the project goes to zero, you guys are going to be pissed off too. I'm just full of questions this morning. I have a question for you now, Will. Solana, you know, really rode this Ethereum killer wave. Do you think that part of the reason that Solana um, is on such a downward slope is because of the layer twos that are popping up on Ethereum that are solving the same issues that Solana set out to solve? Jen, great questions this morning. You must be a journalist or something. Yeah, I think there are some <laughs> questions about uh, Solana's marketing pitch in 2020, 2021, and beginning of this year, 2022. Definitely working with SBF, working with FTX has not borne born any fruit for them. And that has played out pretty predictably over the last few weeks. We can see that huge price action actually happened beginning of the month in November uh, 8th to 9th range for Solana because of what happened with FTX when all the insolvency news became public. Uh, I think for Solana going forward, yes, the L1 debate is more or less dead for right now. There's this thesis running around the last few years that if you have more layer ones that are more functional, have more composability, modularity, they're a little bit different than Ethereum's design, that they're going to play out and be stronger. And that has more or less died. And I think Ethereum here has a lot of room to just kind of crush all its competitors that were playing out the last two years, especially with this layer two thesis that you can build things on top of Ethereum and take all like the great design projects that people have been trying to put on L1s and just stack them on top of Ethereum. And so we'll see that play out more and more. And I expect a lot of other chains, similar to Solana, I think Avalanche, uh, Luna too, even uh, some of those chains should also see some liquidity dry up because I think people are going to be moving their projects back to Ethereum and projects that are built on Ethereum like Polygon. 